Guys, this video is going to discuss um, discipline outside of the ring in boxing. And by coincidence, it's going to focus on my probably my two favourite fighters to watch. The two fighters who I'm a biggest fan of stylistically. Uh, and that's Tyson Fury and Billy Joe Saunders. And for the most part, I'm going to focus on Tyson Fury in this particular video. You know, I am a Tyson Fury fan. I am a Billy Joe Saunders fan. I've followed Tyson Fury's career uh, from the beginning. You know, I've uh, picked him in all his fights. I thought he would beat Vladimir Klitschko. And I believe extremely strongly that he is the number one heavyweight fighter in the world. Based in resume and based on talent. You know, because of that, I've been accused of being a, a Fury fanboy. Um, I've been accused of being very biased. But, you know, maybe this video will surprise a few people. Because I want to express a substantial concern about Tyson Fury. And about his longevity in boxing, actually. Uh, and I've got to say, I am not impressed by the physical condition that Tyson Fury allows himself to get into outside of training camp. Now, I was actually critical of Tyson Fury's physical condition ahead of the first Vladimir Klitschko camp. Um, and I know Peter Fury said some words on Twitter, presumably not directed at myself, but just in general, saying people don't understand boxing, they don't understand that heavyweights don't have to be bodybuilders, heavyweights don't have to have six-packs, Tyson Fury can lose the weight in a training camp. And let me say, I agree with all of those things. I am not someone who is impressed by a fighter because they've got a fantastic muscular body. I am not someone who's impressed, um, you know, by a fighter um, based on those aspects whatsoever. And I do firmly believe that Tyson Fury, at his age, with his athletic talent, will be able to lose the weight he seemingly put on ahead of a fight between Vladimir uh, before the second Vladimir Klitschko fight and I do believe by the time he turns up for that fight he'll be fit and ready to go but I really have strong concerns that this is a continued pattern here I mean Tyson Fury's been an inactive heavyweight you know with the David Hay pullouts the Derek Chisora pullout the Vladimir Klitschko first fight cancelled Tyson Fury has been an inactive fighter and time and time again, we've seen him blow up in weight. And I'm not talking blow up a little bit. I'm talking blow up substantially. I'm talking, you know, several stone. I'm talking American money. I'm talking 30 pounds, 40 pounds, 50 pounds between fights. Um, you know, we've seen him turn up to the ring before when he fought Joey Abel in poor physical condition. Uh, we've seen him well over 20 stone between training camps and whilst I'm not concerned that Fury doesn't have a six pack and whilst I totally believe he can lose the weight before a Vladimir Klitschko fight I firmly believe that whilst he's out living the life other fighters are living the warrior's lifestyle um, you know I look at I don't know I'll give a Rocky analogy if you remember Rocky 3 when Rocky Balboa was like uh, signing autographs and having parties and Mr. T was there as Clubber Lang grinding away, working through the nights, you know. Um, Fury's uniquely talented, but at some point the talent won't be enough. And whilst he's a very young guy, Fury it surprises people how young Fury is, uh, and he's still getting away with it at this stage. If he keeps ballooning up in between fights, and if he keeps I don't know whether he's drinking alcohol, whether he's eating fast food, I don't know what he's doing. But if he keeps, you know, living the life outside of the ring, so we say, over the course of years and years and years, this is going to catch up with him. I mean, we've seen it before in boxing. This is not a new phenomenon. But at one point when Fury's in the 10th, 11th round of a, uh, 10th or 11th round of a, a hard fought all action heavyweight contest, and he's up against someone who uh, has lived the life every day of the year. He's up against someone who's been out running and training on Christmas Day, on New Year's Eve. Um, 
I have concerns that that lifestyle outside of the ring is going to catch up with him. Um, and, you know, Tyson Fury, if you look at him, look at the way he beat Vladimir Klitschko. Speed, foot speed, reflexes, head movement. Um, you know, it only takes one of those to dip slightly. It only takes a little bit of fatigue to set in for one of those to dip. And suddenly the uh, elite defensive performance turns you into a hittable fighter. And I've just got concerns that Vladimir Klitschko is being overlooked slightly. And, you know, we talk about Fury will beat him more convincingly the second time round. Fury's got home advantage this time round. Fury's coming in with the confidence knowing he can be world champion. And that's all true. But people are writing Vladimir Klitschko off too soon. You know, for me, Vladimir didn't get old overnight. That Vladimir was still handling likes of Brian Jennings, Kubrat Pulev with some room, you know, relatively recently. He didn't get old overnight. What he struggled to deal with was the awkward style, movement, and speed of Tyson Fury. Um, but Vladimir is a guy who is taking this rematch for the right reasons. You know, Vladimir doesn't need extra celebrity from this rematch. Vladimir doesn't need the finance from this rematch. I firmly believe Vladimir is taking this fight because he wants to win it and he believes he can win it. And if you look back at that fight, you know, bearing in mind that Vladimir doesn't need the payday, bearing in mind he's coming here to win, he's got to think that he's got to do something differently to get the win, especially on Tyson's home soil. And he's going to look at the fight, he's going to look at where he was most effective, and I think he's going to engage more. I think he's going to throw Corson to the wind and throw more lever. And for me, Vladimir Klitschko is still definitely the number two heavyweight in the world. And at this stage, Vladimir is a more proven puncher than any other heavyweight and a more proven technician than any other heavyweight, bar Tyson Fury. You know, Vladimir Klitschko is the, still the most dangerous heavy, heavyweight fight in the world. And the guy is coming to win, the guy is coming to make changes, and the guy is going to throw more aggressively. And for Tyson Fury to win this fight, his reflexes, his speed, his movement is going to have to be on point. To at least the same extent as it was last time. And when I see him bloated, with a double chin carrying a belly round with him. My concern isn't that Tyson Fury doesn't have a six pack. My concern isn't that Tyson Fury won't weigh in at the weight he normally weighs in. My concern is that if this turns into a really, really tough fight, will that excess outside of the ring hit him in the last two rounds? You know, because Vladimir Klitschko is a guy who you know is training every day of the year, living the Spartan lifestyle every day of the year. And uh, I have concerns, and Tyson Fury is very, very talented, and he's still young, and he's probably getting away with it, and he, he may continue to get away with it. But fundamentally, he's been in an active fight now for several years. He's blown up between fights on multiple occasions, substantially, 40 pounds, you know, 30, between 30 and 50 pounds. He can't be doing that into his 30s, not for my money, not for my money, not in this era of heavyweights. Um... You know, you look at someone like Anthony Joshua, and I don't think Anthony Joshua's got the same talent as Tyson Fury, but Anthony Joshua is a very, very dangerous fighter. You don't see him blowing up 40 pounds between fights, you know. And I'm not someone who's taken in by Anthony Joshua's build and bodybuilder physique, you know. I'm not, but I do believe lifestyle is very, very important outside of the ring. And... Another example of that would be Billy Joe Saunders. You know, you see Billy Joe, and Billy Joe's a small middleweight. You know, if Billy Joe had a different lifestyle, I believe he could make light middleweight. But you know, you see Billy Joe outside of the ring, and you see the kind of condition he gets himself into, and you hear the stories about the lifestyle he enjoys outside of the ring. And again, he's a young guy. He's supremely talented, but he's a guy who gets by on reflexes, speed. You know, hand speed, footwork, movement, similar. And then across the ring from him, you've got a guy who, again, I believe is less talented and less natural in Chris Eubank Jr. But you just wonder. You just wonder. You Look at what happened in the last fight. 
You know, Billy Joe, for me, box Eubanks' ears off for the first half of the fight. And hung on for dear life in the second half of the fight. And for me, that was a case of his conditioning not being in the right place to fight a truly fought 12-round fight. You know, is the same thing going to happen? Is the same thing going to happen next time round? But this time, you know, will Billy Joe be a few years older and gas around earlier? Could the result be different? It's conceivable. It's conceivable. You know, Tyson Fury, Billy Joe Saunders, uh, they're some of the best boxers Britain has. They're my favourite boxers to watch. They're guys who at the minute... I would pick over anyone domestically. But these are guys who are at that age and at that stage in their career where they're going from youngsters to the middle of their careers. And I have concerns. I have concerns that all of that excess will catch up with them at some point late in a fight. And I have concerns that somebody who is potentially less talented um, could beat them due to lack of discipline outside of the ring. And fundamentally, whether Tyson Fury can lose the weight, whether Tyson Fury can turn up in great shape, by the by, I think blowing up by that extent between fights time and time and time again um, will have an effect on a man's body over the course of a career. And I also think it will affect his training camp. I know he has long training camps, but the first week or two of his training camp won't be as effective as it could have been if he's coming in at that sort of weight. Vladimir Klitschko should not be overlooked. Vladimir Klitschko, you could argue, is still a pound-for-pound -pound top-ten fighter. Um, you know, Vladimir Klitschko is... Uh, for me, the most dangerous test in heavyweight boxing, still. And he's been overlooked. I'm not saying he's been overlooked by Tyson Fury, but he's been overlooked by a majority of the fans. People say he's passed it. People say he's faded. People say he's gone. But I'm impressed that Vladimir's taken this rematch. When you've got as much money as Vladimir has, when you've got as much going on outside of the ring as Vladimir has, the fact he's taking this fight shows me he still has the hunger of a champion, the will to win, the desire to win. I don't believe Vladimir is coming for the rematch to do what he did again in the first fight. I believe he's going to try and turn it up a notch. And Tyson Fury may well get away with it again because he is supremely talented and he is still young. But this is by no means a foregone conclusion. And this fight could be a lot more dangerous for Tyson Fury than the first fight. One, because Klitschko's already had 12 rounds and therefore knows what to expect. And two, because Klitschko's coming to roll the dice. Um, so I've got concerns ahead of the Klitschko fight seeing the physical condition Fury looks to be in. And as a Tyson Fury fan who's um, you know, been high on him since the beginning... I just wonder about the longevity of his career with this weight gain seeming to be a routine between fights. Let me know your thoughts. If you've enjoyed this video, do hit the thumbs up button. I'm interested to hear your comments. Am I looking too much into it? I might be. Um, do you agree with me? You know. Many thanks for watching.